You're listening to the Just Japan Podcast. Everything you want to know about Japan. Hey there, folks, and welcome to episode number 189 of the Just Japan Podcast, everything you want to know about Japan. My name is Kevin O'Shea, and I'm the host of this sometimes weekly podcast about all things Japan, and I'm coming to you live, well, not really live, but I'm coming to you from Japan. That's right, this episode is being recorded in Kobe, Japan, in an Airbnb located in Sanomiya, and this is my second full day, third full day, correct me uh here in japan and um yeah that's right i'm here on on summer vacation i finished work in beijing and my family and i uh flew to osaka japan on sunday evening we arrived in kobe later that evening and uh we're staying at a hotel in kobe and now we're staying at an airbnb and it's great so i'm back in japan folks i'm just gonna do this a uh, big one cut thing there's gonna be no real editing in this episode <clears throat> so I'm recording this. I don't have my microphone with me. I'm just using the built-in mic on the MacBook. Um, but yeah, so here we are. We're safe. We're sound. Um, all of you out there listening probably are quite aware of the Osaka earthquake, what happened on, which happened on Monday morning at 7.58 a.m. Uh, my family and I did definitely experience that. We were in Kobe, and Osaka was a Shindo 6. On the, that's the Japanese earthquake scale. Um, in Kobe, it was a Shindo 4. We were staying at a hotel in Sanomiya. And we were on the seventh floor, and um, basically, long, 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 and short of it is, I woke up probably around 6:30. I went to a family mart in order to buy stuff for breakfast for the family, trying to save a few dollars here and there. So instead of going to the hotel breakfast buffet, which was not included in our room rate, um, so we decided to go. I decided to go to the convenience store and pick up some stuff. So I went to the family mart, got bread, juice, milk, coffee, all that stuff. Came back to the hotel. We ate. Kids were watching TV. We were packing our bags as we were going to be moving to our Airbnb. And then my wife screamed, earthquake! And she's much more keen when it comes to that kind of thing than I am. She's from Osaka. She's, you know, lived through the, the 1995 Kobe earthquake. <clears throat> um, she's just much more aware. So there's even been times when there's been shaking in the past and uh, in the apartment and she's like, Kevin, did you feel the earthquake? And I was like, what are you talking about? Um, and which is exactly my son's reaction this time. But when it happened, I could definitely, when she yelled earthquake, I could feel the building moving. I could see it moving. I could see things moving. And the building made this kind of like gah, 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 weird clicking noise, which was pretty scary. And we grabbed the kids and we kind of huddled in the center of the room away from things that might fall. And yeah, that's, that was that. Um, and then, you know, there's, of course, you, you had a lot of disruptions on the day because, um, you know, for example, my mother-in-law was supposed to come and visit us that day, that morning, <clears throat> the very morning, but obviously she couldn't come because there were, no, there were no trains running at all on the Kansai, on any line, Hanshin, Hankyu, um, JR, uh, my daughter also, we had a photo shoot scheduled for her. She worked as a, a, a Tokidoki model, sometimes model. For a company here in Kobe, uh, and and she was scheduled to have her modeling shoot at 9:30 in the morning. We went to the place, and they're like, "We're really sorry, but like you know, um, the photographer and other people who work here are all in Osaka, and they can't get here." And there were like books all over the floor in this office, books all over the place. And Rena and Kai, my kids, were were helping tidy up this this office by putting books back on the bookshelves, which was sweet. Um, so in Kobe, there was no damage, but in Osaka, unfortunately, if you guys have been following the news. <clears throat> there was, you know, a, a fair amount of damage to infrastructure. Um, several hundred people were injured. Um, the, the most horrible part is four people lost their lives. Uh, it's all over the news about a nine-year-old girl who was crushed to death while walking to school where a large cinder block wall um, built on her schoolyard to kind of block view of the swimming pool um, fell on her and, and killed her. And... Um, 
apparently it, it's going to be more coming out about that in the news, but it wasn't built to code. It was an illegal wall. It shouldn't have been there. Or the way it was constructed, it was too big, too tall, not built properly, blah, blah, blah. So <clears throat> it's very interesting to see what's going to happen in that in the future. Um, but yeah, yeah, so uh, the Osaka earthquake, pretty pretty big thing. Um, so what's really interesting is that on Monday evening, actually Monday night, I get contacted by James Reynolds over at uh, Earth Uncut TV. And he was on the podcast before and he said, hey, Kevin, there's someone from theweatherchannel.com who wants to interview someone who's experienced the earthquake um, firsthand for the Weather Channel podcast. And, and since James is up in Tokyo and he hadn't experienced it, he put them in contact with me. And within about 30 minutes of me getting that message, I was you know, standing in the washroom, the bathroom of the Airbnb I'm at, holding my laptop, being interviewed uh, for the Weather Channel podcast. So if you type in, and I'm going to put a link in the show notes at justjapanstuff.com, but if you just go to um, uh, podcast.weather.com, so you type in, uh, go, you know, in your, uh, my brain's not working so well, it's really early in the morning, guys. Um, if you type in podcast.weather.com, and you'll see it's a very dramatic title, and apparently I'm a reporter, which is cool, but is air, uh, not air quotes, it is literally quotes, this one actually scared me. Reporter recounts moment deadly earthquake struck Osaka. <laughs> so that's, that's a pretty dramatic title. So again, one more time, because the, the way when you go to podcast.weather.com, you'll see a list of them. So uh, this one actually scared me. Reporter recounts moment deadly earthquake struck Osaka. <clears throat> that's the title of it. I didn't come up with that title, guys. But it's, it's, a, it's a fun like four and a half minute interview um, with uh, uh, a meteorologist from the Weather Channel. And that was really cool. So uh, another neat little thing to... To share with the world. A couple of years ago, I was interviewed by the BBC, now the Weather Channel. <clears throat> I wasn't expecting that. So that's, that's uh, link is in the show notes again, but go to uh, podcast.weather.com and you'll see it right there. Go listen. But yeah. So what's up? I'm in, I'm in, uh, in Kobe right now. It's pouring rain today. Uh, my kids are both doing a school experience exchange for the next couple of weeks where my son is going to his old elementary school and my daughter is going to the local uh, public kindergarten in her old neighborhood, and that's a great opportunity for them to just um, reconnect with old friends and use their Japanese, because they've been going to a Canadian international school for the last year, and, you know, obviously, English is becoming a dominant language, so we're we're trying to flip that around over the next couple of weeks, and then we're off to Canada for five weeks, so, you know, this is it, you know, when you're raising bilingual kids, it's always, you know, up and down, up and down, up and down, you know. There's always one one language that is the, the, the majority language and one that's the minority language. Uh, you might hear the term sometimes L1 and L2, uh, language one, language two. So, you know, that, that's that. So, uh, you know, I, I plan on doing a lot of hiking while here in Kobe, but again, it's been really like a real heavy rain uh, this morning already. So hiking is not in the cards today. I have to go and pick up my son from elementary school later on today. So I've got to figure out a game plan, guys. Uh, now the thing is, it's it's eight o'clock in the morning as I'm recording this. Nothing in Kobe opens until like eleven, which is insane. Even my wife, who's from Osaka, always found that really bizarre. Like no shops open until eleven. The early shops open at ten, which is crazy because I've been up for hours and hours and hours at that point. So I'm gonna go and, and kick around and, and see what's up. Um, one thing I want to remind everyone uh, uh, is, of course, well, two things. Two things in news. <clears throat> Number one. My Twitter account got locked, shut down. The at JLandKev Twitter account that I've had since 2010 got locked. And I can't get back into it. So here's a word to the wise, folks. If you have something like a Twitter account or a LinkedIn account or an Instagram account and they ask for a recovery number, make sure your recovery phone number is always up to date. I didn't do that. Also make sure you have a functional recovery email that you can log into. So... I live and work in Beijing, China, and as you guys know, they call it the Golden Shield Project in China. Uh, outside of China, people refer to it as the Great Firewall of China, but essentially um, about 90% of the world's internet is blocked and filtered in China. You just simply can't access it. And I'm not going to get into why. Um, as long as I work in China, I'm not going to talk about stuff like that. That's just, I'm playing it safe. But at the end of the day, um, you need to use... Uh, VPN software in order to access the internet that you want to access. You want to use Instagram, you want to use Twitter, Facebook, Google, <clears throat> Gmail, YouTube, things like that. You do need a VPN, uh, virtual private network software. Um, I will I will recommend that anyone who's going to move to China to drop the money, 
spend the money and get ExpressVPN. That's the best. That's what I use. And that's a great way to access Netflix. Um, so still can't figure out how to get into our Amazon Prime account, though. Can't, can't access that. If you guys are, if anyone in China is listening, you can access your, your Amazon Prime. Let me know how the heck you do that. Because I use Viper VPN and Express, and I can't do that. Um, so uh, because of the fact that, I, you know, with using a VPN, you're, you're basically masking your, your, um, you're masking your, your phone or your computer, and the world thinks it's in a different place. But often certain servers you use stop working and you have to bounce between server to server. So maybe in like a 20 minute span of me walking along on Twitter, I might be in London and then I pop over to Japan and then I'm in America. So Twitter sees this really erratic activity with my account, which clearly looks like it's been hacked. It hasn't, but they don't know the backstory. They've got algorithms and bots and things checking things out. <clears throat> so it's happened before several times where my accounts have been locked, my Twitter accounts. So I simply have to do, uh, you know, <clears throat> go into my email, <clears throat> do recovery, and change my password, and boom, there I go. But this time around, my JLand Kev account got locked, and it only gave me the option to use my recovery phone number. Well, I'm stupid, folks. In the time I've been in China, I didn't update my recovery phone number. I have for my at Mad for Maple account, but for my main JLand Kev Japan content podcast content account, I hadn't. So basically it says we're going to send an SMS code to your recovery number and then using that code you can simply get back into your account and change your password. Well guess what guys, it's my old Japanese phone number and I moved away from Japan almost a year ago. That number doesn't exist anymore. I don't have access to that. I don't have a Japanese phone number. So essentially an SMS code would be sent off into the ether. I can't act. And it doesn't, this time around, it doesn't give me the email option. It doesn't allow me to use my recovery email. And I don't know why. The only option is the phone, the recovery phone number which I don't have anymore. So what do I do? I don't know what to do. It's been a couple of weeks now. I've contacted Twitter support a few times. I have not heard anything from them. So moving forward, I'm just going to press on with my teaching account, Mad for Maple. And this is an account that was, I was keeping them separated. I had all of my Japan content, my travel content, my food content on at Jalen Kev. And I had all of my teaching, my education, my professional stuff over at Mad for Maple. But I decided I'm just going to mash it all up, guys. <clears throat> so during the summer holidays, it's mostly going to be about Japan and travel. Uh, and nature and wildlife photography, because you guys might know I'm a pretty avid nature photographer. Um, and come the new school year, it's going to be more kind of leaning towards education stuff. And that's it. So that's at Mad for Maple. Um, as of two days ago, I had 620 followers. Now I'm over 700 right now. So thank uh, you, all of you out there who are helping me so much. To get more followers, I want to give a good shout out to uh, Craig Hoffman out there, Craig Hoffman Eleven on Twitter. He's doing a lot. That's a, the Greg Grizzled Gaijin um, blog. He's doing a lot to help um, send people my way because I think there's just a lot of people who follow me over at Jalen Kev, Japan people who just simply don't know I have a second account and they're just wondering why when they click on Jalen Kev it just says it's locked. So um, go over if if you haven't already. If you are a Twitter person and you did normally follow me on Jalen Kev. That doesn't work anymore. It's gone. So please come over and follow me at, at Mad for Maple on Twitter, at Mad for Maple. Uh, link will be in the show notes at justjapanstuff.com. Please come and follow me there. Um, and one last thing. This is a short episode this week, and I'm honestly not sure. I don't really have a schedule for the summer. It's just going to be all willy-nilly and gucci gucci. Um, but this Friday, June 22nd, uh, there will be a Just Japan podcast meetup at the Harbor Tavern in Sanomiya in Kobe, Japan. So the Harbor Tavern is uh, behind JR Sanomiya Station. It's in a building right on the corner. Uh, there's a McDonald's on the first floor. You can see it. So the Harbor Tavern's up on the seventh floor or something like that. So that's going to start at 6 p.m. So from 6 to 7, it's still happy hour. Get an hour of happy hour in there. Um, I'll be there for several hours hanging out, just meeting some really cool people. So I hope you can make it. Uh, the third Just Japan podcast meetup um, slash tweet up. And again, that will be at the Harbor Tavern in Kobe, Japan, Sanomiya. This Friday, June 22nd at 6 p.m. And I'll be there, guys. Um, well, that's it, guys. I'm on holiday for the rest of the summer. I've got two weeks in Japan. I've got five weeks in Canada. Then I'll be back to Beijing to uh, continue living the Beijing dream, guys. Living the Beijing dream. And uh, yeah. And then and then um, parts unknown after that. So guys, uh, I'm going to enjoy the heck out of my time here in Japan. Go follow me on Instagram. If you want to see like lots of Japan content, go to Instagram, at jlandkev. That's still there. And follow me on Twitter at Mad for Maple, and follow the Facebook page, 
facebook.com slash just Japan stuff. I'm putting up tons of content while I'm here because that's how I roll, guys. That's how I roll. Um, so uh, that's it for me, guys. Uh, my name is Kevin O'Shea. I am a Canadian who lives and works in Beijing, China. Lived in Kobe, Japan for 10 years, and I'm back in Kobe for the next few weeks. Enjoying life. Enjoying life. Man, the air is clean here. It's, it's nice. All right, guys. Um, remember, too, you can also email me at justjapanpodcast at gmail.com. And uh, again, check out the show notes at Just Japan Stuff. So you guys out there, um, we survived the Osaka earthquake. Uh, we weren't in Osaka. We were nearby, but my family and I were A-OK, so don't worry. And for those who are in Osaka, we, we say prayers for them and keep our fingers crossed that infrastructure can be repaired quickly in order to, you know, make life less uncomfortable for the good people of Osaka. All right, guys, um, wherever you are in the world, I hope you're happy. I hope you're healthy. And I'll be talking to you real soon. Hey, wait a second. That sponsors us. That's right. The Just Japan podcast Facebook page. Hey, guys. If you are interested in Japanese news, Japanese culture, photos from Japan, all kinds of really cool Japan things, you need to go over to facebook.com slash just Japan stuff and check it out. It's daily curated news source news feed for you guys. That's right. You're going to find interesting news stories from a variety of Japan based news sources, things like the Asahi Shimbun, uh, the Japan Times, Japan Today, News on Japan. Uh, NHK, a lot of different sources. Some of it's serious, some of it's fun, some of it's my own content. There's also going to be videos from YouTubers in Japan showing really cool and amazing things. So every day you can have a fresh new feed of great Japan related content over at facebook.com slash just Japan stuff. So go over in there today and like it. That's right. You're supporting the podcast. Every person who does it.